if you only know about the graph, if it's increasing or decreasing, you don't know the whole story. Because if I tell you to draw an increasing curve, you could draw it like that, or you can draw it like that. If I say decreasing, you could draw it like that, or you can draw it like that. So the shape, this is called concave up when you hold the water. This stuff here is called concave down when it's spilling the water. So that's what the second derivative will tell us to do here. So we wanna figure out whether a graph is concave up or concave down and find any inflection points. And inflection points is where it changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. So in order to do that, find intervals where it's concave up, concave down, and find the inflection points, we're gonna be involved in the second derivative and we're gonna be making an x, y, y double prime chart. And so we're just focusing on that, this section. And then in the very near future, we're gonna put everything together, do increasing, decreasing with the first derivative, relative maximum, and then concavity issues and inflection points with that second derivative. So just like in the prior section, First row of positive or negative, that tells us whether the original function is increasing or decreasing. And now we have a brand new cloud that involves the second derivative being positive or negative. The second derivative is positive, that means our original graph is concave up. It will hold the water like this guy here and this guy here. And then second derivative of negative means your graph is concave down, means you're gonna spill the water like this graph here and this graph here. So if you look at these, these are increasing. So for both of these, the first derivative is positive. These two graphs are decreasing, so the first derivative is negative. This graph is concave down, this graph is concave down. So notice the second derivative is negative for both of those. This graph and this graph is concave up, so the second derivative is positive for both of those. The inflection point is where that graph changes concavity. So like you see at this graph right here, this is an inflection point, because if you look like to the left of that, that graph is spilling the water. So that graph is concave down, which means from negative infinity to, the, to that x equals three, the graph is concave down, and that's where the second derivative is negative, all right? So here's the original function, all right? Here the first derivative is positive. Here at the max, the first derivative is zero. Then over here, the first derivative is negative because you're going uphill and downhill. But this, where that graph is concave down, that from negative infinity to three, that is where that second derivative is negative of that graph. So, and it knows to the right of that point, it changes, and now it's holding the water. This graph is concave up right here. So that's why that's an inflection point, because the original graph changes concavity from concave down to concave up. And then that's your inflection point right there. And then also over here from that three to infinity, we said the original curve is concave up, but from three to infinity, that would mean that the second derivative is positive because this goes both ways. If your graph is concave up or down, you could tell what the sign of that second derivative is going to be. Now, remember for the first derivative, when we wanna find possible max and mins, we looked at where the first derivative was zero undefined. And now if we wanna find possible inflection points, we're gonna find where the second derivative is zero or undefined. And then that means it's a possible inflection point. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do another chart, an x, y, y double prime chart. And we need to check numbers to the left and to the right of that. And then if the second derivative changes sign from plus to minus or minus to plus, that's gonna be an inflection point. So like a max or min, to distinguish between a max and min, the derivative had to go from plus to minus for a max, minus a plus for a min. Now, inflection points are a little bit nicer. Well, one, it kind of, it's a little bit rougher sometimes because you need to take that second derivative, but also it's a little bit nicer. You don't have to distinguish between plus to minus, minus a plus. If that second derivative switches sign, that's an inflection point, that's it. So the first several in your homework, all I want you to do, I don't need you doing all this work that we're gonna do on this problem right here. So for the first part of that homework, and it will be mentioned in your calendar that I just want you to kind of graph it in the graphing calculator, practice that a little bit, draw that real quick on your screen, and then see if you can kind of guess where that inflection point is going to be at. Because it is important to know by looking at the graph how you can kind of tell. Now, a lot of times you ain't going to know exactly. Like if your answer is like 5 over 2, I don't know if you guess guessed 5 over 2, so we might be close to that. But that's why we need the second derivative. Because if my inflection point is at x equals 2.975, then that second derivative would give me that point, that exact value to check. So the second half of the homework is I want us to be doing model on this right here, where we need to find the first and second derivative, and then we're just gonna work with the second derivative right now. So 
Um, for the first part, I just want us to practice and just looking at the graph and trying to guess what that stuff is. And then the second half of the homework, I want is doing it the legit way, getting the exact values and no guesswork whatsoever there. We're going to have the exact values by that second derivative. We're going to know what those possible inflection points are. We're going to do our chart and check to make sure they're there. And, and we'll be able to apply the first and second derivative. And then we'll do understanding type problems with the first and second derivative, you know, going back and forth between one and the other graph. And that'll help us out for the college understanding stuff and also for the AP test. Now, right here, we're gonna do one example. And all I wanna do, I'm gonna give you a function and I'm gonna say, hey, let's find intervals where it's concave up, concave down and any inflection points. So to do that, when you hear those directions, you need to find second derivative and we're gonna make an X, Y, Y double prime chart. That's it, so don't worry so much about the first derivative. All right, now, I have this here for you just to just to make it a little bit neater. What I suggest you do is pause the video and see if you could find this second derivative on your own. And then if you get stuck, here is all my work for that second derivative. So the first part, since I had a constant on the top, I moved that up, did my easy power rule, chain rule, there's my first derivative. And then in the future, we'll also do max, mins, and increasing, decreasing intervals on the same thing. So I'll stop right there and I'll find some values. Right now, I don't care about that. I just want us to focus on that second derivative and inflection point. So I had to do a quotient rule, do some factoring, did a GCF, and then notice right here, the x squared plus three canceled out one of those with the x squared plus three to the fourth. That's where the three came from, and then I did my GCF, and I was able to get that. So see if you can get that on your own. And then once you get that second derivative, take the top and the bottom, set that equal to zero, all right? Now the bottom part turns out that's never equal to zero, but at least I try to get some numbers from there. And then this top part, um, set that equals zero, I get x equals plus or minus one. So remember what this is. This is gonna be the possible inflection points. It doesn't mean that those are inflection points, but if I have inflection points, they're gonna be occurring at those numbers right there. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna make ourselves an x, y, y double prime chart. And I'm gonna put those two numbers on there and I'm gonna leave a little bit of space to the left and to the right of each one. And this is where the second derivative is equal to zero. Now what I would do, we were kind of using ovals and circles for the first derivative. I'm gonna use rectangles for the second derivative. And that way when we put them all together on one big giant chart, it'll be easy like, oh, I'll look for the circles for the first derivative and do my increase and decrease in relative extrema. And I'll look for the rectangles for my second derivative to do my inflection points there. So now I'm gonna choose numbers to the left and to the right of those as my test points. And now we're concerned, this is your Y double prime row. So anytime you get stuff here, you're gonna plug it into that second derivative. Now, all I need to know is, is it positive or negative? So I'm gonna take these numbers, plug them in here. Now, right here, sometimes you can use this, like if that was a four right there, that would be positive no matter what. And I wouldn't have to worry about plugging into the denominator. So a lot of times there'll be even exponents there and you can utilize that. And so you mainly got to plug it into the top. Now this one, since this is being squared, that means when I square it, that's either going to be zero or positive. If I add three to it, this is going to be positive. And so since I'm taking a positive number of cubing it, this denominator is always going to be positive. So when I'm plugging in, it won't always be like that. Sometimes you got to plug it in all over the place. But when I'm plugging it in there, I know that's always going to be positive. So essentially, all I got to do is plug that in right there. So if I plug in this negative two, that's going to be one minus four, all right? That's going to be a negative number times a negative number. That's going to give us a positive number. If I plug in zero for that X, I get a positive one times a negative 36, which is a negative. And if I plug in two for the X, you're going to get a negative times a negative again, which is a positive. Again, please do that. Those signs will not always alternate. So make sure you double check that each time. And now what we're going to do is interpret our cloud here, right? Wherever that second derivative is positive, F is concave up. Second derivative is negative, F is concave down. So second derivative is positive. I like to do this little thing here. That's my little concave up icon. And then there's my little concave down icon. It's gonna be holding the water, it's gonna be spilling the water. And then this is concave up again because that second derivative is positive. So again, you're using the second derivative to give you information about the original curve. And so, Wherever that second derivative changes sign, that's where I have an inflection point. So this is gonna be an inflection point. This is gonna be an inflection point. If the second derivative went plus, 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 then you don't have any inflection points there. That second derivative is always positive. So that will be our justification. Um, 
when that AP test is, it'll say justify your answers why you have an inflection point and you need to stress, I have an inflection point here since F double prime changes sign, all right? Or F double prime changes from plus to minus, minus to plus. Sometimes it'll give us the graph of that second derivative and that'll be like where the graph of that derivative goes from above to below the x-axis. So we'll, we'll get you exposed to a bunch of different scenarios with that, but this is a great start, just getting this, this organization down and, and then knowing that your clouds from the last section plus this section, just make sure you know those properties as very important. All right, now, if you have inflection points, you need to find those Y values. So to find the Y value, since that's your Y row, take those numbers, plug them into your original function. That's gonna give us three over two for both of these. All right, and then what we're gonna ask you here, we're gonna say, okay, where is this graph concave up? And that's going to be where the second derivative is positive. I don't have any domain issues right there. That denominator is never equal to zero. Uh, my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. <clears throat> if you have domains like square roots or denominators, you know, set the bottom equal to zero, set the inside gradient equal to zero, find the domains first, and then you got to be a little bit careful when you're doing your answers there. But concave up from negative infinity to that negative one. Don't use the negative two. Use the negative one. Always use parentheses. I don't know if I mentioned that last video, but always use parentheses for going up, going down, and concavity issues there. Always use parentheses with that because when you're on the tippity top of that roller coaster, it's like you're not going down yet and you're also not going up anymore. You're just on the top of that derivative of zero. And then, you know, as you're going up, your slope is positive. If you're going down, the slope is negative there. So always use parentheses when you do increase and decreasing and concave up, concave down intervals. And it's also concave up from the one to infinity. And then it's going to be concave down wherever that second derivative is negative. So you're talking in between negative one and a positive one. And then you have inflection points, just kind of label those. And so we got two of them. And that's all you got to do is find out information there. You don't have to graph anything in this section, except for the ones where I want you to kind of practice graphing those. We should see that graph down on your paper there, but the rest of them, you're just gonna just use that second derivative and find that information like that. And then I do need you to understand that graphical connection. So, and then we'll do everything in the future. We'll find increasing, decreasing in addition to all this information there. But if I do graph this function, this is typically what it looks like. Um, I got an inflection point at negative one, one and a half. I got another inflection point right there and it's gonna go up. All right, don't even worry about how I got the rest of that there. We're gonna do the whole thing from scratch in the very near future, but I just wanna point out how you have an inflection point here and you have an inflection point right here. Look at from negative infinity to negative one. This graph is concave up, it's holding water, right? Concave up, and then in between negative one and one, there it's spilling the water, it's concave down, second derivative is negative, and then from one to infinity again, that graph is concave up, it's holding the water, that's why that's concave up right there. So do the best you can with those, and again, I'll probably share my work with, with a bunch of these there, so you gotta practice all these derivatives and stuff on your own, and shore up, because if you, you know, we gotta get strong with our derivatives. If we're strong with all the derivatives in the factoring, that's great. If we still need to work on that, you gotta keep working on that. It'll, it'll get better and better for us there, and then practice these charts as much as possible. But I'll share my work where you can try to figure out a lot of that stuff on your own there, and then just ask me questions as you need to.